Brick by Brick. What a great title theme. We build the foundations of our lives brick by brick, step by step, whether that be our life choices in general or in the shaping of our career paths. The defining moments in the shaping of our career paths will be the main theme of my presentation. For some, that career path, that life calling can go in one straight trajectory from A to Z, all mapped out in front of us with very few deviations along the way. If that's your case, count yourself very fortunate indeed. For many others, life comes to a crossroads when a choice has to be made. The head thinks one thing wants to go one way, the heart the other, and it can often take us in a completely new direction. Another mode is when we personally experience a life-altering, catastrophic event that seemingly obliterates our life path and ignites us to a true heart calling. I'm going to speak on the latter and share with you my journey and the defining moments that led to that heart calling. It's often been said that the journey from here to here is a long one, from head to heart. And when they combine, it can cause monumental shifts in our life path. Now, I'm sure some of you have detected a tiny little bit of accent. Anyone guess where from? Scotland, that's correct. I emigrated from Canada many years ago from Scotland. I left behind a very successful career there. I was in the investment insurance industry. And at the time I left to come to Canada, out of my company, they had a sales force of 40,000. I was one of their top five advisors. I was at the top of my game. With the world at my feet, all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, I set forth for Canada, along with my wife and young son, to carve out a new future, to continue building on those previous successes and set forth on that career path. Well, within one week of arriving in Canada, my wife Barbara was rushed into hospital with severe stomach pain. The hospital ran a battery of tests, and the specialist gave us the shocking news that my wife Barbara had cancer, cancer in the kidney, and told us they would remove that affected kidney immediately in order to save her life, which they did. Unfortunately, though, the cancer returned. It was now in the liver, stage four, inoperable, terminal. Within one week, sorry, within two years of arriving in Canada, my wife Barbara was dead. When Barbara died, it felt like my whole world had ended. My whole future crashed down on me. There was no solid ground beneath me anymore. There was nothing left, nothing. I was at my lowest low, my darkest dark. There was no way forward for me. All was lost, or so it seemed. Even my career, which I loved, no longer held any pull for me. So I began to learn more about grief and loss. And this actually began during Barbara's illness. And the more I learned about this, the more I got within me an inkling, a passion, for helping others in the bereavement field. I began enrolling in grief training programs. I became a certified grief support group facilitator. And what I found was that the more I ran these groups, these support groups, the more I gave of myself, the more I contributed to others, the bigger and stronger my calling grew. It began to take on arms and legs of its own. Until one day, I found myself speaking to a funeral pre-planning company. This was an organization that helps people plan ahead and put their funeral wishes and prefaces in place during living years. As I spoke with this company and shared my story and told them that it could help others deal with their life affairs, their life and death matters, and I suggested that they create a position for me, give me a platform where I could present my story through seminars. And they said yes. When this and this combine, it can become an unstoppable power for good. 
And over the last 12, 15 years or so, I presented my story to well over 70,000 seminar attendees, mainly through funeral homes, healthcare organizations, financial institutions, community groups at large. And what's even more incredible than that is that by being able to share my story of loss through seminar, it enabled the attendees to get in touch with their own life and death matters. It allowed them to articulate their own unique life story and share that with their loved ones and what they want to be remembered for. And the more that took place, the stronger my calling became, as I mentioned. And what happened with that is interacting with all those thousands of people, I realized that we all have that story within us. We all have that unique story within us to share with others. And when we touch that depth within ourselves, when we access the heart and listen to the heart, mountains can be moved and things move quickly. And speaking of head to heart, take a look at this slide. When the heart speaks, take good notes. Great advice, isn't it? Great advice. I saw that at a function I was at recently with my second wife. I'm now remarried. My beautiful wife is here today. When the heart speaks, take good notes. Thankfully, that is something I've always done throughout my life. So with all those life experiences I've shared with you, along with the taking of good notes throughout the years, especially during my grieving years, led to the creation and sharing of the bear story. And really to what's got me standing here today. For the bear story, in essence, is about using our own life experiences for good, for the power of good, basically contributing back to society. So let me share with you a story. A long, long time ago, in a distant land, not unlike ours, there lived a bunch of bears. And amongst these bears was a young, courageous bear who took great pride in his ability to look after himself, handle himself all on his own. Where one day out playing rough and tumble with all his little bear friends, on the edges of the forest, they became exceedingly hungry from all their exertions and decided to go into the forest, deeper into the forest, in search of food. They all knew the dangers that lurked there. They knew the stories their elders had shared of the big unknown beast who resided there, who lurked in the shadows on that other side. In all their exuberance and youth, though, they discarded those risks and still set forth. Well, after much walking and much searching, our little bear stumbled upon a beehive high up in a tree. All the other little bears cheered in delight as their hero scaled the tree, began to bring the honey back down. In fact, they even brought a pot with them to pour it into. As they sat around in a circle, licking their lips in anticipation of the great feast they were about to enjoy, when out of the shadows appeared the big unknown bear. He moved sternly towards our little bear and swiped the pot of honey out of his paws and swooped back into the shadows to devour his spoils. All the little bears were stunned and upset, although no one said a word. No one said a word. Our little bear wanted to cry, but he swallowed that lump in his throat, for he had to be the bravest and strongest of all the little bears. Hadn't they always told him so? One by one, all the little bears got up and left the circle. Our bear was the last to leave, continually biting his lip all the way home to stop the tears from falling. It was only once he got home behind closed doors when he knew no one was there did he begin to cry over his great loss. That night, he cried himself to sleep, and the next morning he awoke ready to fight another day. Time rolled on, and our bear stretched up into adulthood with all the responsibilities that entails. He still continued playing rough and tumble with his friends, but it took on a more serious note now. They took part in wrestling competitions with bears from all the other parts of the forest. And unlike the tussles with his friends before, which he almost always won, some of these other bears were rougher and tougher than him. And on those occasions, he would lose and be defeated. This rigmarole continued as the seasons flew by. Summer's end was fast approaching. And our bear decided to surprise his family and go into the forest to find them a treat. On finding his just reserves, making his way home out the forest, he was once again accosted by that big unknown bear, the one who had stolen his honey all those years before. 
This time, though, our boar put up a fight. He was not going to give up his honey that easy. The big unknown beast swung out ferociously with a large paw, landing a brutal blow at the chest of our bear, causing a gaping hole at his heart. Our bear fell to the ground in agony, with blood streaming out of his gaping hole. He looked to the ground, and the big unknown beast with his other big paw grabbed his precious food and darted back into the shadows to devour his ill-gotten gains. Our bear lay there stunned and numb, bleeding profusely from the hole of his heart. Eventually, the numbness wore off. He was able to make his way home. News traveled fast of his ordeal. When all his friends heard the news, they all came running. They all came running to help and support. They all told him what a brave and courageous bear he was to stand up to that big unknown bear, to take him on, the bear that was feared by all in the forest, and they all wished him a speedy recovery. With that, our bear went outside, still reeling in pain, and began to rub mud all over his wound to conceal it from his view and the view of others. Once that task was completed, he crawled back into bed, and there he stayed until a scab had formed over his wound. Then the next morning he got up, ready to fight another day. And although his aches and pains continued, he pretended he was fully healthy again and went about his daily business in the usual way. On occasion, though, his pain would get so great, so unbearable, that he would burst out into an emotional frenzied tirade at whoever was present. After one such disturbing outburst, making his way home, he looked to the heavens and shouted, Enough! No more! Enough! He fell to the ground with tears streaming down his face. He raised his paw in the air and brought it pounding down on his own heart. The blood immediately poured out of his own wound. He saw it in his own paw and realized he had acknowledged his own pain. When he got home that night, he went outside and gently washed all the mud from his wound to reveal his bleeding heart. The next morning when he awoke, he did the same thing and did the same thing each and every day thereafter, for he had now realized that he did not need to conceal. He could reveal and heal. Reveal and heal. Yes, on those dark, dark nights of winter, when it was easy to give up, when all seemed lost, when he didn't even have to try anymore, he still continued. And with that, he grew stronger and began having more good days than bad. Then one night as he was going to sleep, he felt something different. Something had shifted within him. He wondered what was happening, a transformation. And as he dozed off, he noticed that for the first time in a long, long time, he felt no pain at all. And after a wonderful full night's sleep, he woke up the next morning so full of life, so full of energy, he ran outside ready to live another day. He went to wash his wound and was astonished to find that it had healed completely healed. All that was left was a little scar line as a reminder of what happened. And he could touch that scar line now without any pain. He thought of all the times that he had wanted to give up as he felt the sun in his back, realized spring had sprung, and thought of those times when he wanted to give up. He was thankful he had continued and was victorious. It was like someone had peeled off a pair of blinders that had been limiting his vision all of his life, and now he could clearly see. And of all the things he could clearly see, all the gifts he had found on his journey, the one that he cherished most was that true power came from within, from the heart, not the outside world as he previously thought. So with all these wonderful insights, he decided to set out in, on a new direction in life, take all his gifts he had learned back into the forest, to share with everyone in the forest. As he made his way forward, he was pondering on how and where he could best utilize these gifts. He looked up to the skies for guidance, for answers. At that precise moment, he tripped over the leg of a young bear who lay spread eagled under a tree. Our bear fell over his leg that was protruding onto the path. As our bear fell to the ground, his paw landed in a pool of blood. He looked up, he saw that the young bear had been wounded at the heart, with a gaping hole at his heart. Are you okay? Are you okay? asked the bear. Do you need some help? 
No, no, said the little bear. I'll be fine in a minute. Once I rub some mud in my wound, then I'll be on my way. Our wise bear looked at the little bear with soft, compassionate eyes and said, sat down, put his arm around his shoulder and said, I want to share with you a story. A long, long time ago, in a distant land, not unlike ours, there lived a bunch of bears. That's my story. And we all have that story within us, whether we are 10 years old or 110. What's yours? What's your story? What's your empowerment? What will be the building blocks of your contribution to the world? Contributing, empowering, self-expressing. That's what changes the world, most especially contribution. In fact, let's take a quick look at contribution, do a little exercise. You may even want to close your eyes for doing this. I want you to think throughout your life, all the people have helped you along the way, the ones who have contributed most to you, the ones who have made the difference that made the difference. It may come to you immediately, it may come to you later upon reflection, and it may surprise you who it is. It could be a, f a friend, it could be a fleeting acquaintance, an old teacher, your professor, the one who saw that untapped potential within and gave guidance. Just let that sink in. Let that simmer in on you. And if your eyes are closed, you can open them now. Just let that simmer in. As I mentioned, it may come to you immediately, it may come later tonight, it might come through in your dreams, or else it will just drift into consciousness when it's ready. When it does come, though, take good notes and go back and thank that person for the gifts, the difference they've made in your life. Go back and thank them in gratitude for the contribution, the building blocks of bricks that they've afforded you. We all have done likewise to others without probably even knowing it and will continue to do so. In closing, I'd like to leave you one last nugget of wisdom from our little bear about how much of our life we spend looking down. Whether that's our head stuck in a textbook, studying for an exam, or laughing at some funny meme on our cell phone. Every now and then, though, take a little breather. Look up. You might be amazed at what you find there, for that's where creativity resides. And who knows, you may even trip over your own life calling while doing so. For I honestly believe, with all my heart, that in most instances, we do not choose our life calling. Our life calling chooses us. So I encourage you to continually share your own unique life story as it unfolds. And remember, no matter what life throws at you, wherever you are on your path, there is always a way forward. Thank you.